name is Dirk Johnson. Uh, my the name Lama gave me is Yeshe Sanglam. Sanglam means uh, wisdom of the secret path, basically, for what that's worth. And that's what I'm going to talk about. So it's the secret path. So we're going to talk about the outer experience of the secret path. Also, I'm going to share this in chat. Um, I know people in the Gompa can't see it, but we have a little web page for accumulating the mantras. You can still send them to Deb, uh, or if you enter them on the website, they will also go to Deb. And that's uh, Buddha Dharma study.com is the name of the website. So let me maximize this to make it a little easier. Oops, sorry. A little bit of technical issue. There we go. All right, so my talk will be about, we're, we're accumulating uh, Vajra Guru Mantra, Oma Hum, Benza Guru, Pema Siddhi Hum, uh, for Lama's birthday. Uh, it's also for ourselves and for the uh, all sentient beings throughout time and space. And the prayer that we uh, are starting with when we do our mantras is Dusum, is known as Dusum Sangye, and you'll see it spelled differently all the time. Uh, but it's known as the six Vajra lines. It also has been sometimes called it's sometimes called Barche uh, Lamsa, but I don't like to call it that. I used to call it that myself, but I don't because it creates confusion with a different different term that's actually called that and is a longer, uh, bigger. Uh, text. Anyway, the six Vajra lines are, uh, and I'll try to I'll try to go through the historical stuff quickly. Um, if, if I have posted this on the website, not on the website, I posted a link to it in the uh, on the calendar. Um, <clears throat> so if you do want to see like the text, you can review it later. Uh, it's based on the profound terma treasures of Oregon Chokyur Dacian Lingpa, based on the common and the talk is based on the commentaries of Jamyang Chinti Choki Lodro and Dujum Rinpoche. And I'll also uh, provide a brief biography of Chokyur Ling Lingpa. And this picture here is Guru Dragpa, which is the most wrathful form of uh, Padmasambhava Guru Rinpoche. And we'll get into all of these pieces throughout in a minute. So I'm going to start with uh, who, where, where did this prayer come from? It came from uh, Oregon Chokyur Deshin Lingpa, also known as Chokling, because uh, Chokyur plus Lingpa. Lingpa is a name that's given to a treasure terma revealer. I'm not going to get too far into that, but there's a tradition of that Padmasambhava hid treasures throughout Tibet to be discovered at a later time. And uh, so Chokyur Lingpa is considered one of the great revealers of those treasures. Uh, and so he was uh, actually is considered to have been the reincarnation of King Trisong Detson, who is the one who invited uh, Chantarakshita Vimala Mitra Padmasambhava to Tibet, uh, which is when Buddhism was really established in Tibet although it went through its ups and downs over the years until it became firmly established. Uh, Chokyur Deshin Lingpa was very close with Kongtru uh, Rinpoche, Jiangwen Kongtru, and Jamyang Chinsi Wangpo, that's Jiangwen Kongtru. Uh, they're much better known, and part of the reason they're better known is because he died when he was 41 years old, and they lived to old age. So they had another, they both lived almost to the 20th century, so they, they outdid them by another 20 or 30 years, depending on which one. Uh, his revelations are very important to both the Kaju and the Nyingma lineages. And where I was, this prayer was transmitted to me first, uh, was by Chagdad Rinpoche, 
like the Toku Rinpoche, who used to have us accumulate it. And Kempo Gyurme Trinley, uh, when I first met him, had us practicing a green Tara sadhana from a Terma of Tara discovered by Chokling. Um, I'm not going to go into that right now, but but there is that also as part of our heritage and history. So I have a, a connection to him through my lamas and through Lama Jinpa also, my previous lamas and Lama Jinpa as well. And the way they were discovered, this is this is not a very clear picture here, but um, it's the best one I could find. This, uh, this is Mount, uh, this is Namdrak Rock on Mount Rinchen, Sek, Sek, <laughs> Sekpa. Um, and this is where this terma was discovered. This is a, what's known as an earth, earth terma. And that's one of the reasons uh, Chokir Lingpa is considered a great teratonist because he, he actually pulled things out of the rocks and out of caves and things that were hidden, as well as out of uh, space and out of his mind and through pure visions. But this six Vajra lines, known as Dusum Sangye, or the prayer to Guru Rinpoche for removing obstacles and fulfilling wishes, he discovered on the right-hand side of this rock. And there was a large crowd with him when he did it. In other words, there were, there were a lot of witnesses to him having actually walked up and pulled this right out of it. Uh, Jamyang Chinsi Wangpo, uh, whom you may or may not heard of, I, Probably didn't do a very good job of covering that. Uh, Control Rinpoche and Jamyan Chensi Wangpo and Mipam Rinpoche, they're, they're the best known of the so called Rime Lamas. But uh, Chokyur Lingpa was very closely associated with Jamyan Chensi and, and, uh, and Jangan Control. Um, and he is one of the primary Rime Lamas also, even though he died early. So what Jamyang Chensei Wangpo says of this location is that in the past, the great Teraton Doodle Dorje opened this place and wrote an extensive guidebook, which you can actually find online, by the way. And later, Chokyur Daishin Lingpa revealed an abundance of profound termas here. So one of those termas that he revealed here was the six Vajra lines, known as Dusum Sangye. I'm going to refer to them as the six Vajra lines. Now I'm stepping into something that's not really part of the talk, but there's a book uh, that's Wisdom Publications published it, or maybe it was Snow Lion originally, uh, The Light of Wisdom, which is a text by Padmasambhava with a commentary by Jamgun Contra. And this is a very high text. This is a really important text. It's, I think it's three volumes, if I remember correctly. Um, but the root text is a terma that was discovered by Chokling. Uh, and so the story of that is that in the town of uh, Karma Tatsan, there was a big, big cave at the end of the town. And a big crowd had gathered because it had been let, they let it be known that Chokyur Lingpa was going to, uh, had knew where a terma was and he was going to go get it. And uh, they came, they, they came along with him. And while they came along with them, he, he had them reciting, this is why I'm including this here, he had them reciting the uh, six Vajra lines. So they were singing six Vajra lines, reciting the Vajra Guru mantra as they walked to this cave. And they walked up to a rock and Chilting extracted a Vajra from the rock. They say that he pulled it out halfway from the rock and left it there, then reached in and pulled out a... Uh, a box, a terma box, and inside that terma box was the terma that here that's known as, uh, of course now I'm going blank, <laughs> the, one that, the, the one that's in the root text for Light of Wisdom. And that was decoded by him and Chokyur Lingpa, I mean, uh, yeah, Chokyur Lingpa together. Chokyur Lingpa and Jamyan Chensi Wangpo decoded the Dakini strip script because these termas are written in the Kini script, which most people can't read. So the two of them, Chokyur Lingpa and Jamyan Chinsi Wangpo, were very, very, very close. They when when the termas were discovered, although Chokyur Lingpa is usually the one who found them, 
it was always decoded to, they always decoded them together. And Jamyun Chunsi Wangpo was actually Cho Kyu Lingpa's teacher. And so the name, yeah, the name of this, uh, all of his revelations are known as the four cycles of Guru Sadhana. And Jamyun Control says that Lamrim Yeshe Nyingpo, which is the Light of Wisdom text here, um, and that's Durje Drolo, Guru Rinpoche's Durje Drolo there, which is another wrathful Guru Rinpoche. He says that uh, the Lamrim Yeshe Nyingpo is in the category of the innermost, uh, innermost category of, of, of Terama, the four categories being uh, outer, inner, secret, and innermost. And so, as you've noticed, I'm sure it's in a wrathful form. And so it's important to realize that these wrathful forms aren't forms of anger. They're not forms of hatred. They're not forms of attack. These are compassionate forms. But if you think about, like, in my case, um, my case, when I, like, when I, when I was a smoker, cigarette smoker, the idea of quitting smoking cigarettes was a very wrathful thing to me. It was something that I did not want to do. I knew I should. I knew it was better for me. I wanted to even, but it was something I just did not want to do. And that that is a form. That's like a wrathful situation. You know, it's uh, it's I I need this. This is this. I know that this is important. I know that I should do this. I know I should sit down on the cushion and meditate, but I don't want to. And the suggestion that I do, that's a wrathful force. And think about it. If you tell somebody to quit drinking, well, <laughs> they're, they're not going to, they're going to respond to you as though you're a demon. So it's, it's, it's more like that. I don't know if that's clear or not. Uh, I'll leave it open to questions at the end in case, uh, in case that needs more clarification, but the wrath, the, but, but, but the wrathful forms are not forms of anger. They're not forms of hatred. They're not forms of conflict. They are forms uh, of compassion. Now, one of the commentaries on the six Vajra lines was by Jamyang Songsar Chinsi Choki Dodro. And he was the second Songsar Chinsi. Now, I always say Chinsi because Chagda Drubashe pronounced it Chinsi because he was from Kham. So that's an Eastern Tibetan accent of Tiense. Uh, most people say Tiense, or most don't, maybe, I don't know. Anyway, there's also the pronunciation Tiense. Um, <clears throat> I think that's Central Tibetan, I think is Tiense. Uh, you may know the third Dzongzar Tiense Choki Dodro. Uh, he's the filmmaker who uh, founded uh, uh, Siddhartha's Intent, and 84,000 and is, uh, does a lot of videos and has written a lot of books such as, uh, now I won't be able to think of one, What Makes You Not a Buddhist? It's one of his books. Anyway, so he's he's the tolku of this one, this Chensi Choki Lodra. And he wrote a commentary called The Vajra Worlds Unveiled. And we know that he wrote it on Tuesday, August 15th, 1933. And it explains the prayer in great depth. It's like really detailed. So don't worry, I'm not going to go through that commentary. But this is informed by that commentary. And there's one piece of it that I thought was really important to share with people who might not have heard it, which is, uh, he says, to the west of the Vajra seat, that would be, that, that's Bodh Gaya, the Vajra seat, to the west of the Vajra seat at Jambu's center. Jambu is the continent, Jambu, Jambu Vipa. Vipa really means continent. So it's the continent of Jambu, it's the continent of, of, of it's, it's generalized in cosmology to be the entire earth, but you could, it's really India, so uh, in a lot of ways. Anyway, so to the west of the Vajra Sea, the Jambu's center lies Udiana, which is Apabramsa. Now, Apabramsa, Apabramsa is a Middle Indic language. Uh, so you have, you have Pali, Sanskrit, Apabramsha and Prakrit are, are the four main ones. Prakrit also means something else, but it's also the name of a language. So Apabramsa, 
Sanskrit, Prakri, Pali. Apabrancha is an interesting language because of the Doha or the spiritual songs of, uh, of uh, Talopa and Naropa, for example, are extant, or they come down to us originally, our texts of those songs are in Apabrancha. So anyway, to the west of the Vajra seat at Jambu's center, which the Vajra seat is the center of Jambu, lies Udiana, which is to the west of the center. And the name Udiana, which is, is Apabrancha for the land of the sky dancers, the, the land of the Dakini, the land of the uh, Kadros, Kandros. And it was upon the Sindhu Ocean to the northwest of Udiana, and I'm, I'm not sure where that is. They say that this area really is what would be the Swat Valley, what is now pretty much Pakistan, uh, where uh, it was on this ocean to the northwest of Udiana, which became corrupted, Udiana to Oregon, that this great master took miraculous birth, the great master being Padmasambhava. So when we say at the beginning of the seven line prayer that we started the prayers with today, Orgyan, Yulji, Orgyan, that's Udi, that's because he's from Udiana, from the northwest border of Udiana. So I thought that was an interesting piece inside that. Most of my talk or when the, the part going over the prayer will, will be uh, a, a commentary from Dujum uh, Jigdra Yeshi Dorje, better known simply as Dujum Rinpoche. And that commentary is called The Ornament of Padmasambhava's Enlightened Vision. And so I'm going to just base it on the outer portion of his talk with a little bit of, as we just were here, informed by Chensi Choki Lodro's commentary. Dujum Rinpoche says of these uh, six Vajra lines, this is the quintessence of all the prayers that come from the profound terma treasures of Orgyan Chokyu Dogitation Lingpa, and it carries the blessing of being the Vajra speech of Guru Rinpoche himself. So when we, we recite this prayer, it's good to know where it came from. It's good to know how much authenticity the lineage and the traditions give it. Um, Dijan Rinpoche explained the prayer according to the commentary that he received from his teacher, which is uh, Gurme Nadon. Uh, and his teacher received it from Dorje Zigi Tsao, which is Jamyang Chen, another name for Jamyang Chensei Wang Po. And he wrote the commentary himself. I don't know the exact date of it. It's probably known, but I didn't find it. I believe this is where he wrote it. No, this is uh, this is definitely Sangye Sandra Pimparo in, in Bhutan. I think this is where he wrote it, but I'm not 100% certain. Anyway, it's very close to where he, it's nearby, not the exact place. And now <clears throat> for the prayer. Let me see how much time I've used up. I hope I'm not boring you. <sighs> but if I am, I apologize. So we say the, um, this is uh, not, I did not. Uh, uh, I, you'd have to try pretty hard to bore us. Well, I'll try. And you're not trying very hard to bore us. <laughs> Uh, I didn't. I didn't sync up the two translations of the six Vajra lines, but it's it's pretty simple. So there's not a lot of variation really, anyway. So I'm going to just go with the with the translation that was used in the translation of the commentary here. And that's uh, you know. So we begin with Dusum Sanjay Guru Rinpoche, you know, the embodiment of Buddha's past, present, and future, Guru Rinpoche. So among the three jewels. Uh, this represents the Buddha. So we're talking, we're talking about Guru Rinpoche as the Buddha. <clears throat> and that's because Orgyan Rinpoche from Udiana is inseparable from the body, speech, and mind of all Buddhas at the three times, the three times being the past, present, and the future. <clears throat> and pardon me, but I thought. I'm going to go through before we before I go through the commentary. I'm going to go through the. We're, I'm going to we're going to do the prayer. 
I actually meant to do that at the beginning, but somehow I passed it by. <clears throat> so I'll talk about how it can be sung at the end, but I'm going to do it the way I was taught. And then we can talk about how it can be done this way or other ways later. Do zoom zan jehi guru him po jehi no dru kundang de wa chen po ja but jehi kun zehil du du drak po zaham zo wa so chinji to so jinahang hoe hi ba che shiwa dahan sambhangi rupa Om ya bensa ehi mahasiddhi Om ya So that's the basic prayer. Guru Rinpoche, embodiment of the Buddhas at the three times. Guru, who is great bliss, Lord of all accomplishments. Guru, who is the dynamic and wrathful tamer of Mara, dispeller of all hindrances. I pray to you, bestow your blessings. Please remove all outer, inner, and secret obstacles. And grant your blessings that our wishes be spontaneously accomplished. Oma hum benza guru pe ma sidi hum hum benza guru pe ma sidi hum. Oma hum benza guru pe ma sidi hum. This translation is uh, by Richard Barron and Chakit Rinpoche. Oh, Richard Barron, also known as Choki Nima. And that's the terma, the one that Choki Lingpa pulled, huh? pulled out of the rock. <clears throat> so, <clears throat> we begin with the embodiment of Buddha's past, present, and future. That's Guru Rinpoche. Among the three jewels, he's the Buddha because he re he's inseparable from the body, speech, and mind of all Buddhas at the three times. He's the master of all siddhis. Siddhi uh, is a, just a Sanskrit word, just means uh, success or accomplishment. But the siddhis became over time and within a Buddhist context uh, as powers. There's certain types of powers. Master of all Siddhis, Guru of Great Bliss, refers to the uh, jewel of the Dharma, you know, the three jewels, Buddha, Dharma, and Sangha, the jewel of the Dharma, because the precious qualities of the higher realms and the definite goodness all come from practicing according to the speech of the Guru, which is the Dharma. The Dharma is the speech of the Guru. <clears throat> and the dispeller of all obstacles, this is the jewel of the Sangha, because obstacles of the five paths and ten stages are dispelled and precious qualities all arise thanks to our companions on the path, the Sangha. And the Sangha in turn depends upon Bergen Rinpoche, Guru Rinpoche, Padma Sambhava. So ultimately the Sangha dispels obstacles to the paths and stages. Well, what are the paths and stages? So just in case you don't know it or in case you forgot, I'll remind you the five paths are the path of accumulation, 
I'm not going to read the Sanskrit to you because you don't want to make it put you through it. Path of joining, path of seeing, path of meditation, and the path of no more learning. So these five paths are uh, we're, we are once we take the bodhisattva vows, we begin on the path of accumulation, put it that way. So, and uh, most of us will always be on the path of accumulation. <clears throat> and then the, the 10 stages are the 10 bhumis of the bodhisattva path. Uh, and even the first bhumi is beyond most of us. So I'm not gonna go into the bhumis either, don't worry. So the Sangha dispels obstacles to the paths and stages. That's the five paths and the 10 bhumis. And we're back to, you know, dispeller of all obstacles, wrathful subjugator of Maras. So that, that was put differently. Let me see, actually, let's, let's look at this other translation here. Guru, who is the dynamic and wrathful tamer of Maras, the speller of all hindrances. You see, it's a little, little different, actually. But the meaning remains. Because <clears throat> Guru Rinpoche, especially in the form, in this form, this wrathful form, Guru Drakpo, he instantly subjugates the four fearsome Maras and dispatches into space the three secret enemies. And those secret enemies are dualistic grasping, ego fixation, and atta attachment and aversion are one thing, really. So you have you know, dualistic grasping, self and other going toward it, right? Ego fixation, I am, I am, I am, and attachment and aversion. I want it, I don't want it, I want it, I don't want it. Like that, Those, so that he instantly subjugates that. Uh, and the four Maras are, according to Sutra, which is all I'm going to talk about today. The aggregates, the five aggregates. Can anybody like to tell me what the five aggregates are? <laughs> that would be unfair, sorry. Um, form, feeling, let's see if I can do it. Form, feeling, I could have yesterday. Form, feeling, perception. Form, feeling. Help. Form, feeling. Discrimination, composition. Discrimination, thank you. <laughs> composition factors in consciousness. There you go, thank you. Who was that? Was that Susan? Hi, right, Susan. Thank you, Susan. Yeah. Um, okay. My mind went blank. So the four maras are, 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 are the aggregates, form, feeling, discrimination. I can't, still can't do it. Form, feeling, discrimination, perception, and consciousness. Uh, and the, the uh, destructive emotions, which we know what those are. Death, we know what that is. And the sons of God. And these the sons of gods are the craving for pleasure, the craving for peace, and the craving for convenience. And, you know, I certainly have, that is one of my maras. I don't know about you. Uh, and by doing so, by, by subjugating these four maras and by, uh, dispatching into space the three secret enemies he liberates himself and after he liberates himself then with the complete mastery of the four enlightened activities which are pacifying increasing magnetizing and subjugating without any pause or any time intervening between his liberation of himself and attaining these activities, mastery over these activities without a pause, his compassion both annihilates negativity and nurtures being. So this is this is an 
a process at which at the moment that he achieves this, he also achieves, at the moment he achieves his own enlightenment, he also achieves everyone else's freedom from negativity and begins to nurture them. <clears throat> and so then, let me make sure I didn't skip something because I'm clearly, oh, I did. So there it is, he liberates others. And the force of his, uh, through the force of his great primordial wisdom endowed with twofold purity, he liberates emotional and cognitive obscurations along with habitual tendencies, all in the non-dual space and awareness. Now this is, of course, you know, you realize that you, you, I, you and I are not separate from him. So it's not like there's something out there that does this. This is something that is in our very nature. So endowed with a twofold purity, he liberates emotional and cognitive obscurations. And so the twofold purity can be in the sense that it's always pure by its very nature. In other words, it's originally pure. It was already pure before we even thought about it. And purity in the sense that all of the adventitious stains which have accumulated on that original purity have, have, have been cleared or purified or it can also be thought of uh i'm not saying these are the only two ways but these are certainly two ways that are often uh, used it can be the two kinds of obscuration the which are the cognitive obscurations and emotional obscurations which aren't really that different cognitive would be more like conceptual versus uh, emotional and that's why he holds this name, Wrathful Energy, Drakpo Tsa, Guru Drakpo. And it's to the master who's endowed with these qualities, this power to dispel all of this negative, all this negativity from ourselves. And at the same time, instantaneously, without separation from the world, that we pray. And uh, if we keep this in mind, uh, uh, while we're praying, we, we can have pretty strong yearning and devotion that we quickly accomplish our desire to attain uh, these ordinary and supreme CDs. Now we talked about, talked about CDs before, CD originally just meant success. <laughs> uh, but the ordinary cities are, are, are to dwell in a celestial realm, to overcome armies, invisibility, fleet feet, fast feet, Fast, fast walking, and to and create create uh, inexhaustible vessels and some other things that I didn't even write down. And the supreme city, the one the one ultimately that all of these others uh, should be helping us to achieve anyway, is enlightenment itself. And then there's that term there, nyenpa, which is uh, given the synonym of approach, and that's. Uh, part of uh, Vajrayana practice. I'm not gonna go into that too much, but it's the, be, it's the, we're at the, we're, we're practicing the approach of the deity into our, into our world. And then we ask that he grants his blessing. We pray through his, that his blessings, that through his blessing, we are transformed. But remember that we aren't praying to something outside. Our body is blessed by the Lama's wisdom body and realizes the body bhadra of inseparable appearance and emptiness. So now we, our body itself, Om, Ah, uh, our speech is blessed by the Lama's wisdom speech. The Dharma is realized as the speech vajra of inseparable sound and emptiness. Our mind is blessed by the Lama's wisdom mind and is realized as the mind vajra of inseparable Rigpa awareness and emptiness. So these are the three Buddha bodies that we are coming into direct awareness of. And we're asking them to dispel outer, inner, and secret obstacles. It should have bolded that, sorry. 
any circumstances which are any circumstances and conditions that are unfavorable for our accomplishing enlightenment and any of those conditions are known as obstacles. So here's a list of obstacles, which is always interesting. The outer obstacles, pride, attachment, hatred, envy. You don't think of those usually as outer obstacles probably, but that's, they are considered outer. Lightning, meteors, thunderbolts. <laughs> now, if you live in a place like Tibet, you can surely see those. Uh, sharp and powerful weapons. Man, it's good if there are not too many of those or just people opening fire on you from a gun, which didn't exist when this list was written. Tyrants and imprisonment, thieves and enemies, demons, flesh eaters, and so forth. Now, this mad enraged elephants, I always think of just as uh, careless, driver, uh, careless drivers. And lions and predators being just basically... Anything else that could attack you that hasn't been mentioned. <laughs> poison and poison and of snakes. Uh, poison, of course, you can think of that. I think of that as uh, pollution, as well as you know, just bad food or whatever. Illness and epidemics. None of us have ever had a problem with an epidemic. Yeah? Untimely death, poverty and deprivation. And frustrated wishes and thwarted plans. So these, this is a, a list of the obstacles that we're asking to be freed from. Now the inner obstacles, I already explained the four, mar four maras before. <clears throat> Secret obstacles are the five poisons. Attachment, desire, hatred and anger, ignorance and stupidity pride and ignorance, and jealousy and envy. Now, those are also pure, the, oh, sorry. Uh, <clears throat> we pray that we can dispel outer obstacles by being able to realize appearances, sounds, and awareness is the play of deity mantra and dharmakaya. Now, uh, if you haven't been exposed to a teaching about that, don't worry about it too much. Um, rest with your awareness in that. We can dispel inner obstacles by liberating subject and object into the space of selflessness when we start to realize that this self, this perceived self isn't real. And we can dispel secret obstacles by being able to realize the five poisons as the five wisdoms, which is what I was about to talk about when I talked about the five poisons of the destructive emotions. Uh, each of them has a purity element, but that's an entirely different talk, so I'm not going to go into that either. And we can also just simply, you know, for, you can forget all this complication that I just went into if you haven't been received teachings about it or um, uh, Or if it's just too complicated, we can just pray that everything, that all of this is just dispelled through the sheer power of the blessing of Orgin Rinpoche's secret body, speech, and mind, which ultimately is our own Buddha nature. May I be struck down if I'm wrong. It's fine. <clears throat> and then we say, grant your blessings so all our aspirations are spontaneously fulfilled. And those are the two kinds, immediate and ultimate. And so for the immediate aspiration, we're praying that for as long as we have not realized enlightenment, we accumulate all the favorable conditions needed to attain it. So that's the immediate aspirations. And what we're asking for is to have the conditions that allow us and help us, that support us to accumulate the uh, merit and the ability to achieve these higher things. And the, these, these, sorry, <laughs> these favorable conditions, long life and a freedom from sickness. Sorgen Lingpa did not have that long life and he still went way farther than I expect ever to get. Uh, it's good to have a, we, 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 we want a beautiful form because, and a good fortune and a good family that all makes things easier for us. Prosperity and intelligence. Those are, the, those are considered seven of the uh, conditions that are helpful toward, uh, to, to, to bring about 
practice. Then specifically, we pray that our mind may grow, mind may grow rich. And these, of course, are even more important for the seven riches of the exalted ones, faith, discipline, joyful endeavor, self-control, learning, generosity, and wisdom. And then, of course, the ultimate aspiration is to accomplish the supreme attainment of Mahamudra, also known as enlightenment itself. And that's why we pray, grant your blessings so that all such immediate and ultimate aspirations may swiftly be accomplished, naturally and spontaneously, without effort or exertion. And Dujram Rinpoche adds, the supreme swift path, the very best of all, is this prayer to the sublime and perfect master. If you yearn for peace and well-being, or whatever you wish for, and this in future lives, put all your faith in this prayer and count on it always. Now, in, in chat, uh, it was asked, why isn't desiring to be freed from mundane obstacles the morrow of the sons of gods? Uh, good question, because it does all sound pretty contradictory, doesn't it? I mean, first we have the morrow of the sons of gods, which is convenience and peace. And then here, even here, right here, he says, if you yearn for peace. Uh, if the intention is to progress along the path, then whatever supports that intention is favorable. Uh, if convenience or, or a yearning for peace to be, I want to be, if, if peace is, I just want to be left alone, I don't want to have to do anything, then that's, that's Amara, peace. If peace is, uh, I have the confidence and the clarity and the calmness to be able to pursue the path, then that's not, not Amara then that's that's not a mar of the sons of gods so it's 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 subtle but i think if you uh, look at your own motivations and desires for things like peace that you will be able to to uh, discern the difference um i mean that's the end of my talk about the I'm going to stop my share for the moment and see if there are any questions before we do a quick movement into the actual practice. Anybody, any questions at all? Or comments, arguments, or as Lama says, complaints? Hey, Derek, we got a question here in the compa. <laughs> Hi, Dirk. This is Daniel. Thank you so much for the talk. Why is it that if ultimately what we're praying to is something that is inner to what, you know, is our own Buddha nature, why the focus on, you know, Pakistan and someone who lived long ago? Why is there this sort of sense of like a prayer to somebody or something outside of us when in fact it's something that's inside of us? <clears throat> What, would you keep the mic? Because this isn't a question that I can answer, but I could dialogue with you a little bit. Would, do you think that if we prayed to some to our to what would what would we pray to if we prayed to something inside of us? Yeah, just to just to that, right? To this sort of uh, sense inside of us. I, I don't know. I wouldn't put a label on it or objectify it well and I, it the 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 llama really what we're doing is and and that that sort of segues into into the next thing that i'm going to bring up but the llama is 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 something external that represents our own buddha nature if I, if it, my, me anyway, if I pray to myself, <laughs> that, it's a big confusion inside of my own mind. 
as to what's my Buddha nature and what's just me. Because I have, I'm not far enough advanced to be able to, to separate those two things. So I separate it, I separate it by by encountering a being who who is who is that. And and that keeps me from being deluded and thinking that I inside of myself, what does that actually mean? Now I know I said that, but what does it mean? It doesn't really mean anything, does it? Inside of myself. It's not really inside of me. The Buddha nature isn't me. The Buddha nature isn't a personal thing. It's not what I am. I am not the Buddha nature. The Buddha nature is not me. So even though I did say, which is really us, <laughs> it's not really what I meant. And I'm I'm sorry that I'm not able to communicate that very clearly. Um, I actually think I think you did a perfectly fine job communicating it. Thank you. I appreciate it. Well. I still haven't been able to articulate it clear enough for myself. Anyway, <laughs> okay. So I'll, that's I'll why we do that guru tonight. yoga, Dirk. That's that's right. That's exactly why. that's part of it. <laughs> uh, anybody else want to be put on the spot? <laughs> no. Okay. Well, I'm going to share again then, and uh, you can interrupt me. By the way, it's okay. And I'll try to keep this short, but I did, I gave you one way to sing this. And if you would sing with me, I would appreciate it. Um, and then I'll, I'll, I'll try a different way. And then I'll, I have a couple of suggestions. So I'm going to do it the way I did it before, which is uh, the way I learned it from Chagud Rinpoche. I'm sorry, this, it's really hard not to be able to see you very well. Dirk, we'll sing with you, but I'm going to leave the mic off because oh, yeah, it just gets yeah. weird. Otherwise, we'll just interfere with each other. Do zoom zan jehi guru rimbo jehi nandru kundan diwa but ye head guns a hill to do drago Zahazo one lives Dahan Zambandungi Drubahan Jinji. On that, I want to point out because it can be hard. It can be hard at first because really it's the six Vajra lines, but it's really three couplets. So the first line, Dusum Sanje Guru Rin Poche, No Drup Kun Dag De Wa Chen Poi Ja. And the way it's sung in that way, the last word of the first line becomes part of the second line. And that links them more tightly. And so also with the last line of the third line and the fourth line, and the last wor word of the fifth line. And the sixth line. So I know it's like do zoom on Jehi Guru Rimpo. Sounds like the end of a line. Jehi no dru kundag dewa chen boja. What it is is a linking. But Jehe Kunze Hill do do drapo Zahan so bandip so jinji la to so linked again. 
Now that being said, uh, there's recordings of that. And if you want, I, I, I will make a recording of it if you want to sing it that way. But it, it, it would be perfectly fine to just say, do zoom zanje guru din boche no gunda de watch and boy jabba ched gun zel do do drag pods also wa dead so jin chi love to so jin on zang way but ched ji wa dang zam palungi do pa chin ji lo it's perfectly fine too and you don't have to be perfect at it you know stumble through it Dusum Sanjay Guru Rinpoche, no Drup Kun Dag De Wachen Poja, Bakched Kun Zel Du Du Drag Potsa, Zowa Deb So Jin Ji Lab Tu So, Jin Nang Zang Wei Bakched Ji Wadang, Zampa Lungi Du Par Jin Ji Lo. You know, it doesn't just, just it's the intention and the, uh, the the effort and the attempt is what's important. Um, try to do the best you can, but don't worry about what it sounds. Don't worry about it. Just don't, just do it. Now also, in my opinion, and you should check with Lama, but my opinion is also that one step farther. It's good to do it in the Tibetan. It's nice to have the tradition with you. It's when I sing it with the tune, you know, I think of Chagat Rinpoche from whom I learned it. It makes it it enriches it. It gives me it it makes me feel more in touch with it, more connected to it, more connected to the tradition, all kinds of things like that. But you know, you can also just say Guru Rinpoche, embodiment of the Buddhas of the three times. Guru who is great bliss, Lord of all accomplishments. Guru who is the dynamic and wrathful tamer of Mara. Dispeller of all hindrance. I pray to you, bestow your blessing. Please remove all outer, inner, and secret obstacles and grant your blessings that our wishes be spontaneously fulfilled. So if you only want to do it in English, I say, don't let it stop you that other people are doing it in Tibetan. My uh, check. Lama Jinpa almost always has us do everything in English. English is the language where we understand it, right? Uh, sometimes like a prayer like this, sometimes we do it in Tibetan. Uh, Chagdid Rinpoche, we did everything in Tibetan. Kempo Gyurme Chinli, we did everything twice. We did it in Tibetan and then we did it in English. So uh, from my experience, I, I, I say just do it in whatever way you're able to and whatever way you respond to best and whatever way you feel more comfortable. Just do it. The important thing is just to do it. And the same then is true of the Vajra Guru Mantra. Now, I know I don't want to insult people who already know, but I think that sometimes people don't really know how to use a mala. So um, when you're counting, a mala will be anywhere from, this is not a rosary. A rosary has few, a lot fewer beads for one thing. This is a, a 108 or 111, 113 sometimes, or even more it can be. But we count one round of this as 100. Now when you're counting, uh, see that's, that's, this is called known as, this is the guru bead. And so when you get, Around you count Omahum Benza Guru Pema City, Hong Omahum Benza Guru Pema City, Hong Omahum Benza Guru Pema City, Hong. Now you get all the way around and you've arrived back at the beginning at the Guru Bead. You don't keep going past it, you turn it around and you go back. Omahum Benza Guru Pema City, Hong Omahum Benza Guru Pema City, Hong. Now, so you should always be. Every hundred, every every time around, you turn it around and go back. Turn around, go back. 
Now you'll see that I also have these things, they're called counters. And so one set of counter, you know, let's use a different, I have a nicer, up an easier to see set of counters on this one. Um, you can see the uh, one of them is a, a door J and the other one is a, is a bell. And so when I count one time around, I count one bead there, each of these have, has 10 beads on it. Every time around, I move one bead up and that, so that counts a hundred, right? That's one, one mala. And when I do all 10 of them, then I move one on, on the, on the other one. And that's, so that's a thousand. So I'm counting thousands. And every time I get to uh, a thousand, uh, this, uh, this model doesn't, I'm not using this model right now to accumulate anything. So let me show you back on this one. I have, I have three models that I'm working with. Okay, so then there's a little bead here that moves every time you do, every time you do, you do 10. And every time you do 10, you do one, which is a thousand. And then when you get to 10,000, you move this bead, this bead here, one bead up. And so you count. And so this is the counting, this, the Mahler works as the counting system. You can count a million. By doing that, that process, you can get a million mantras counted on this. When I first started uh, with, with any mantras, people were just going like this while they were chanting and, and, and they said to count and nobody had any idea how to count. <laughs> but that's, that's what it, it does. It'll help you count. You can count and keep track just using your prayer beads. So just wanted to say that because I, I've, I've known that I've been asked by a lot of people at different times. So I just want to make sure that's clear since we're talking about accumulation. Um, another way to do, now we got the uh, Vajra Guru Mantra. Now, one way I like to do it, but not for accumulation, notice, you know, if I do Om Yam now, if you, you can do that, and if you want to accumulate that way, that's okay too, but you're going to be practicing a lot to get 100 mantras. <clears throat> so, another one is, Oma hum benza guru pe ma siri hum. Oma hum hum benza guru pe ma siri hum. Oma hum hum benza guru pe ma siri hum. Oma hum hum benza guru pe ma siri hum. Now that's still, for me, rather slow. So I'm going to mostly be saying, Oma hum benza guru pe ma siri hum. 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 When I first started doing mantra, I won't, I'm not going to name the Lama, but uh, we were in a group and we were doing this mantra. And I would do this. I would go, So I'd stop at the end and he said, stop. Don't do that. This is this is this is a, this is continuous. This is continuous. So that also means that you can do the mantra while you're breathing in. So you don't have to do a long breath, breathe in, do a long. Your your your. This is this is not uh, outside or just inside. Oops, I see. There's something in chat that I missed. Uh, well, it's not really a question. So, uh, uh, well, she says, uh, uh, that a single mantra could be given different meanings. Well, that's, 
yeah, the, the mantra, the mantra is, is the mantra. Um, okay. Any more, any other questions? <laughs> is there anything that I could, that I could talk about better or more, or should I end? Okay. We'll end. <laughs> uh, Dirk, I think it's your talk. So, um, you know, it's about 12, 13 and, uh, it's really up to you. Well, uh, if there aren't any more questions, uh, I, I mean, we could, we could, we could practice it a little more. So why don't we do that? Good idea. Okay. So why don't we do, uh, the mantra, the, the, I mean, I'm going to sing it according to the way I was taught, uh, the Dusum Sangye, and then, uh, I'll do, I'll do that three times and then I will do I, at my speed. I'll do five malas <clears throat> and you can do however many you can do. Maybe you can do more, maybe you can't, but however many you do is fine. And the, the good news is, is that we all, <clears throat> we all uh, together by doing this together, we are actually creating more merit than we would if we did them individually. Yeah, so group accumulation and um, that's wonderful. Thanks, Dirk. <laughs> So I, I'm sorry. So we need to know how many people are online and in the compa for this. So that's helpful to know. Yeah, to count it, we do. All right. Do zooms on Jehi Guru Pimpo Jehi no Drukundang Diwan but head guns a hill do do drug po zahazo handebzo jin so jinna hoe he but Dahan Zambam Lungi Drubahan Chinchi Duro Duzum Zanje Guru Rambo Jehe No Drukundam Diwahan But ye head guns a hill do do drug po Zahazo Debzo Jindi La do so Jina the way he but ye Dahan Zambalungi Drubahan Jinjiko Duzum Zanje Guru Pimbo Jehe No Drugundang Dewahan Jen But ye head guns a hill do do drug po Zahazo Hadebzo Jinji La do so Jinna Hanzo Ehi Bache Jiwa Dahan Zambalungi Rupahan Jinjito Om Yahum Ben Sambalungi 
Ama anlayınca gülüm benim, benim anlayınca gülüm benim. Okay, hey, Connor, do you want to uh, do closing prayers? Yeah, thanks, Dirk. That was a great talk. Thank you. Omo araya pasaya na aindi Om araya pasaya na aindi Omo